Welcome to episode 143 of the Clarity Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I'll be your host. And today is a very special day because we get to talk with the one and only Jasmine Starr. We're making our way through the fog of life and clarity is understanding where we are on the map. You are here. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. So Jasmine and I met a number of years ago at Hudson Yards uh, in New York City at Gary Vaynerchuk's office. Uh, we were part of uh, an pretty much, I think, one of the first groups that ever uh, did his 4Ds program where he went in and spent a day with his, Gary's executive team at VaynerMedia and got to spend some time with Gary. It's really the only way that uh, our paths would ever cross from the West Coast and the East Coast. But since then, uh, we've really both seen one another execute at a distance on some different trajectories and the types of businesses we have, but very similar in the sense that they are the acknowledgement that it's a constant struggle and that nobody gets to the end overnight, that nobody gets there by not starting and not doing and not failing and not losing a lot in order to succeed. If you don't know uh, who Jasmine Starr is, we'll link her up in the comments, but she has hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram, um, many more across other platforms. And she's the founder of a, a company called Social Curator, which is very, very interesting. It's a toolkit, really a toolkit in a community. Think like... Um, kind of like Peloton for marketing and small business. So there's um, content and there's community. So really cool. We'll get into that a little bit. But today we talk about some things that I think are applicable to anyone, whether you're in business or if you're just um, motivated in life to do whatever it is that you feel driven to do, whether that's family, whether that's business, whether that's community service. We talk about how to break down time and some things that Jasmine has done to really structure her life in a way where she can get the things done that are the most important things. And I know it's easy to say, oh, you, it's easy to say that now, but she really didn't start there. I don't think any of us ever start at the end, right? We start at the beginning. And so we talk about scheduling time. We talk about going through 2020 and what to do into 2021 if you're a professional, if you're in business. Um, and at the very end, I think we get some really great, precise wisdom on what you can do to make the most out of just 15 minutes between now and the end of the year in a consistent way. So I hope you enjoy this conversation with the one and only Jasmine Starr. Jasmine, this has been a long time coming. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me and the Clarity Compressed audience. I am very excited. It's been way too long, but we're going to make up for lost time. Yes. I have no doubt. Let's go. Let's go. Um, so you're, you're very, very busy. Um, it took a couple of swings to get this on the calendar and we made it happen. That's just indicative <laughs> of you know, I think just your general level of drive, motivation. Um, and, you know, we, we worked a little bit. I'm just kind of going to go a way I wasn't planning on going right out of the gate. But um, you have an assistant. So I think a lot of people I do. who listen or who watch who are busy. Um, I recently this year also brought on an EA and it's changed my life substantially. And um, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about um, why you didn't have one before and what pushed you over the what pushed you over the top to actually get one? I actually like that we're starting here because I'm, I'm pretty sure half your audience is going to roll their eyes and be like, no, I'm not listening to uh -huh. people who have uh, EAs, executive assistants, <laughs> no, like no, not no, my no, folks. No, no, yeah. And I just want to I just want to call it out. I just want to call it out. Call a spade a spade. I like I was that person. A hundred percent as the daughter of an immigrant, as somebody who had no money, no education to start like a business, like the last thing I ever thought I would have on my team would be an assistant. And I feel like I can handle my inbox. I can make my own doctor's appointments. I can do these things. And then you finally get to a point in your life, in your career, it's like, just because you can, does it really mean that you should? Mm -hmm. In the time that I am spending in my inbox or setting up doctor's appointments or managing my calendar, Am I more valuable, AKA more profitable doing something else in the business? Something that is like a revenue drain versus a revenue generator. Yep. I choose the generators all day, every day. Yep. And so, so just give people some context. It was a long time coming. How long were you on the hustle by yourself without the assistant? 13 years. There you go. Okay. So just, I want to give a little context. 13 there. years. Right. Over, overnight, <laughs> yes. overnight success, 13 years later. Right. You now have an assistant. <laughs> so um, I, I think that's just good context because entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, 
small business owners, um, even managers in businesses, general managers in businesses often underestimate how much or overestimate how much they can get done. And if they're anything like me, I have a hard time prioritizing what I should spend my time and attention on, right? I'm the kind of person that uh, I like checking off the boxes and just my personality type, I naturally have a hard time prioritizing. Um, I'm like, oh, well, if I can just do this thing and I put it aside, that's productive. Meanwhile, we have this massive thing that, you know, like a big <laughs> bucket of valuable things I could be collecting, but instead I'm really excited that I like wrote that one email. I don't know. what. Are you the same way? Or what, what do you see? What do you see out there? Because you're someone who is connected with hundreds of thousands, maybe millions at this point of small business owners that look to you, not not for just like Instagram advice, but for business advice and management advice. So what do you, what do you think? You know, I actually would say it's probably the inverse. I'm actually rather good at prioritizing, mm -hmm. but as a creative entrepreneur, it was robbing me of the thing that made me me. Mm -hmm. And because I was good at prioritizing, I was being super responsible, but in the process of being responsible, I was forgetting the thing that made me tick and that made me special. And like, I know how to synthesize. I know how to create content. I know how to, um, um, contextualize content for different industries and business owners. And what was happening was I was being so caught up in the weeds that it was preventing me from stepping back and being like, what do I need to go? Where do I need to be? And how do I need to serve? And when I realized that getting an assistant wasn't about me, it was about putting me in a position to serve other people in a bigger capacity. It then all of a sudden it became super easy for me to rationalize the decision to invest in an assistant. Very good. Yeah. So like definitely opposite mentalities, but at the same time, like knowing, <laughs> same, knowing, yeah, what, lane, exactly. you, knowing yep. what lane you can run in and basically structuring your life so that you can run in that lane is really the point of anything, whether it's an assistant, whether I think it's a digital solution or a template or some, some right. organizational system. Running in your lane is something that um, I think a lot of people struggle with or at least struggle with optimizing. Which kind of brings me to the main context of what I think our conversation should be. And that's this crazy thing that we're all calling 2020. Um, 2020 started off in a really great way. Um, I read a Forbes article, a, an article Forbes did on you early in January um, from 2020. And it was, it, was, it was funny to read that article and then just realize what happened. Like the world you were living in <laughs> in 2020. So let's talk about 2020 for a second. How has 2020 played out for you now that we're almost through it? You know, Paul, um, as, um, as an educator, as like a content creator, I held a class. Talk about the bravado. I held a class in January entitled 2020 Vision for 2020. Okay, I thought I was like super cute. I was like, oh, I'm feeling kind of fly. This title, it's all branded. And it's like, what a fool. Like if you really had 2020 vision, you didn't see that coming, honey. You yeah. did not see the year you that probably, failed. You probably would have went somewhere and hid and started to cry if you had that far vision. <laughs> like I don't, people are always like, do you want to know how you're going to die? I'm like, no. No, no, I don't. Exactly. Yeah. Nope. What, wouldn't you want to like live like it's win. live like it's your last day on earth? Like no, because it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's my last day on earth. <laughs> right. So so you had you had a cute title, cute name, right? You it was it's all wrong. <laughs> so so how did hundred percent how did 2020 play out for you? And then how do you see it playing out for like a lot of the people that follow you and you advise? Absolutely. So um, I am co-founder. My husband and I are co-founders of Social Curator. And Social Curator is a, a resource center for small business owners that provides marketing resources to build a brand and market it on market your business on social media. So when the pandemic hit in full force in March, the people we serve, aka our paying members, were turning to us saying, we don't know how to show up. And many of our members, we serve a creative community as well. So we are talking about travel agents, yeah. wedding photographers, DJs, venues, and they're like, the our business hit. disappeared overnight. Yeah. And so we have to be able, we had to be able to um, really strategize what it meant for people who were affected by the pandemic in different capacities. Some people, it was like all systems go. Digital course creators, their business was soaring while other people's took a downturn. So we had to take a step back and really take a holistic view of how are we going to be controlling our messaging and creating resources to help people who were 
impacted mm -hmm. um, in a not so great way. So what we definitely saw, regardless of industries were impacted, were that people were saying, I now have time in a different capacity. So instead of us saying that people were going to be like, I'm freaking out, I'm going to stop making my monthly payment and I'm going to try to figure out my own. We started seeing a, an incre a complete increase in the amount of people who wanted to subscribe to Social Curator because they're like, we need to show up differently now. So let's take people who were definitely hard hit, like hairstylists. Hairstylists were like, yeah, yeah, I know social media should be good for my business. I'm not quite, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And all of a sudden, at least out here in California, salons were closed for three months. And it was during those three months that people were doing massive things like coming up with their branding strategy. How are they gonna plan for their social content? How are they actually creating content? So as long as we were able to serve them with the resources and the strategy to supplement, yep. we saw a total uptick in our business. When all of a sudden you can't do what you were doing, there's like this paralysis that sets in or your marketing was very sales driven or very offers driven. Like, Hey, you're always just like your only social media activity was like, Hey, let me tell you something's on sale right now, or you can buy this, or there's a weekend or a holiday sale. When they started doing that, all of a sudden they had nothing to talk about when people couldn't come in the door. So like when you're saying this about salons, I'm realizing like, yeah, it wasn't just the industries that I'm most familiar with. It was a lot of small businesses who got had their head down in the grind of the day in, day out, just trying to transact on a regular basis. But it sounds like what you advise them and kind of the angle I take as well is like, hey, there's it's never too late to start defining your brand, strategizing how you can serve people, not just with what you actually sell, but all of the things and the halo of things that is around what you sell, the lifestyle, the education, et cetera. A hundred percent. And one thing to really take into consideration is that there was a point in time where we had, the, we were afforded the luxury to be judicious about what we as business owners were willing to do. And then all of a sudden, when everything was stripped away, you're like, listen, I never I would ever go live on Instagram and watch me go live on Instagram. So many people are like, I'm never going to do, you know, like, people were complete, complete against TikTok. And then all of a sudden, when TikTok hit Instagram, AKA Reels, it was like they were struck with, there. you have to show up in this capacity and you have to get noticed. And people now have a willingness, a grit, an mm -hmm. unrefined, unabashed chutzpah to say, I'm gonna take whatever I have to make it work. And I absolutely love it. You talk about what it takes to get your business going. Um, let me pull it up and so I can actually quote accurately from it. It's, it's very easy to make excuses for why you, why you haven't started you know, especially people that are creating things, there's this imposter syndrome that, that uh, can easily set in. So you're at your post and I'm just going to read through it so that we have uh, good context. You said, I don't know about you, but my business looks a lot different than it did in the beginning of the year. I'm going to share the top three ways people get stuck in their business and how to move through them based on my own experiences. So you give three reasons. So the first reason was you don't know where to begin. You might be feeling stuck because you don't know the next step to take. So let's talk about these reasons. So if, if people are feeling stuck because they don't know what's next step to take, what's your advice to them? The advice is first and foremost. So I always say like I'm I'm 50% holy and 50% hood. So I'm always going to start with like the nice answer and then come in with just like the real talk. And like <laughs> the holy answer is you're not alone. Like you're deceiving yourself to believe that there is a small group of people who actually know what the next step is. Mm -hmm. That's patently false. Mm -hmm. No human on earth knows the quote unquote right next step. Mm -hmm. You can only take a step and then in retrospect, assess whether or not it was right or whether it needs to be amended. I do not believe you could take a wrong step. And that leads me to like the hood. It's just like, stop making your life so perfect that you're limiting your growth because you're afraid of what somebody's going to say if you take a perceived misstep. Mm -hmm. But for all intents and purposes, it takes just as much energy for somebody to believe that somebody is looking at them saying you misstepped and just as much energy to say that somebody is looking at me to show them what is truly possible for them to do. You get to choose where you exert your energy. I always prefer the latter. The energy expending is, is a real thing because the emotional energy that comes with the fear of taking a step or the, the reaction to what happens when you actually start stepping. And when you start stepping, you start building momentum. And yes, things come up, unexpected things come up. No one knows really how it's going to end. But you're right, you're still spending the energy. Uh, the other reason people don't get started is you say other people know how or um, they know more than I do. And you talk about if you're looking at other people's accomplishments as a barometer for how much you can do, I say heck no to that, my friend. 
So give us some holy and holy. Right. Like other people are just better than me. <laughs> they know more than me. Why should I start? Because somebody else knows more. Okay. So um, the, the holy answer is, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm here to hear you out. So say what you want to say, get it all out. And then the hood <laughs> answer is, honey, somebody does do it better. Somebody does know more. Somebody has been doing it longer. Somebody has more money. Somebody is thinner and richer and fancier and classier and has a dad or a mom who's super connected and can do more than you. But just because somebody has all of those things does not diminish the power of the thing that you have been put here to say and do. That there is somebody in the world who needs to hear what you have to say, even if it has been said a thousand times before. Because there's three M's when it comes to showing up on behalf of your business. Number one is the message. It's like what you say. So even if Paul and I are saying the same thing, you might be saying, ah, Paul already said it. Well, let me get into the second component. After message is messenger. You might need to hear it from Paul. He might just say it in a way that hits you differently than the way that you would hear it from me. And lastly is the medium. That even if Paul and I are saying the same message, and even if as the messengers we share it the same way, Paul might be better at video and I might be better on a separate medium like podcasting, like blog post, like captions, like photos. So that even if there is somebody who has done it or does it better or has more, it doesn't take away or diminish the fact that there are three powerful M's at play. So again, it takes just as much energy to believe that you are not worthy or enough to share the thing that you've been put on this earth to do, or just say, I am here to speak to one person in my impact and my light might change the way that they see their day. Boom. That's it. What do you want to believe? That moves perfectly into the third the third reason that people don't start because they think, Jasmine, nobody cares about my posts. Nobody cares about my posts. Why should I even post them? A lot of people care about your posts. Look, you have all these hundreds of thousands of followers and you get likes and comments. Everyone cares about your posts, but nobody cares about mine. Well, that's why people don't start. Side. Right. Yeah. The holy side. Give it right, to us. The holy side is just like if you share your message and it impacts just one person, you don't know, like my father has always raised me to believe that you change one person and you change a home. And if you change a home, you change a street and you change a street, you change a neighborhood, you change a neighborhood, you change a county, and then you change a state and then you change a nation. When you have the ability to impact one person's life, that should not be diminished. That's the holy side. Now the hood side, like the hood side comes out and says, honey, nobody's going to care about what you say until you care for them. We cannot walk around the internet with our hands open to be like, everybody pay attention to me, pour something into my hands. The way that the way and the reason that many of us, myself included early on, was not getting likes, comments, shares, or engagement was because I wasn't giving what I ultimately wanted to get. And yes, I'm going to get all biblical principle here is you must give far more than you ever expect to receive. The same principle works in life and on social media. So I call it the 10X rule. If you want somebody to like your photo go and like 10 photos. If you want somebody to leave a comment, go and leave a comment more than four words on somebody else's posts. You must give far before you ever get. Today's a day and age when regardless of whether or not you have a small business or you're trying to sell a product, um, we see this a lot on LinkedIn these days. There are people that now need to make a representation of yourself in, in public, online, um, if you want to be considered for positions, if you want to be considered for people to buy your product, if it's a B2B product. And so there's an element of what you're saying now that used to be, it was either a, um, kind of just for your own ego, right? You want to, you want to just, I want people to follow me to make me feel good about myself. But then maybe that transitions to like, well, actually I have a product or something I'm selling. So I need mm. to get a following so I can sell my product. And now I feel like there's this other category where it's almost like to be a participant in the world. Now, granted, you don't have to be on social media in any way, shape or form to be a participant in the world, but those people don't matter right now because they're not seeing this. The people that are seeing this are people that are participants in the digital world. So even what you're saying now, there are a lot of professionals, even on LinkedIn that say, oh, I'm, I'm shy. I'm not good with social media. I don't know. But people do business with other people that they like, that they connect with, that they have core beliefs that are aligned. So what you're saying, I think, is incredibly relevant to anybody that's in the professional world. At least we'll just start it right there. Because 
just making your belief known or your mentality known, or like you're saying, give more than you get. That's one thing that the currency that everybody has right now, if you think, okay, I can't take great pictures like Jasmine, I can't make write great copy, I can't have my own podcast, or I don't have the time for it. Well, what you can do, like you said, well, just get on Instagram, LinkedIn, and start giving some love to people by liking or commenting or celebrating their achievement. And that selfless act, it sounds like what you're saying, is going to in turn have people turn their head toward you and start paying attention to, to what you have to say and what you're about. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah, a hundred percent. And even if people are like, you know what, Paul, that like sounds good, but this is like Hallmark Christmas movie that, you know, that we're talking about right here. Like I'm not, I'm not in the game of being selfless. Like it's cool. Like you like the theory you're like, but of all the things that's going on in my business, I'm out here. I'm a, trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents. Yep. I'm a squirrel trying to get a nut being selfless. is just not what my top priority. I get that. So let's just get back and be real. Mm -hmm. Simon Sinek says that people buy why mm -hmm. we do what we do. They just don't buy what we sell. Right. So from a pragmatic business, homegirl to homie conversation is specifically millennials who are going to be the next biggest charge of our consumer. If not now, then definitely in the near future mm -hmm. is like, they're not saying, I just want a widget. They're saying, why did you create the widget? Because guess what? There's a lot of widgets and the internet has broken all barriers. So if I get a widget in Australia, if I get a widget in America or in Antarctica. I'm going to get my widget. I want to know why you made it because that's going to help me make my decision. So even if the selflessness didn't resonate with you, a business strategy, it better should because your competition will be doing that. For sure. For sure. I love, I love that Simon Sinek uh, mentality. Um, I always lean on Seth Godin's kind of parallel translation of brand that goes alongside of that. And he says, you know what? It's actually the feeling that's generated when they see your company or your logo or interact with your product, it's the feeling that's generated that moves them either toward you or pushes them away, right? And I think that's that that why that you're talking about is intrinsically communicated through your involvement, through how everything looks, how it sounds, how you give back to other people. And so uh, I think we're really aligned there. And that's just the truth of human connection and relationship. Who the heck, I've never seen a very giving person who is a very lonely person. I've never seen that in my life, right? And whether that's, that's comp and whether that's compliments, it's not like you have to give like stuff. Just who, who doesn't want to be around an encouraging person? I do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And when people say like, actually to take a step back, it's like, sure, if you can give stuff, great. But what is the most valuable thing we all own? It's not the keys to a Maserati. Mm -hmm. And it's not your private jet. The most valuable thing that we all own I don't have is either. time. I don't have either of those so things. If, well, neither do I. But, you know, it's not <laughs> yet, get, Paul. Not you. yet. I don't have that yet. <laughs> but, like, in all reality, like, the most valuable thing we have is time. So mm -hmm. when you give somebody time, that's not for nothing. I'm giving you the most valuable thing I own. And I think that people should step into that power and really realize that when you give somebody time, you're sharing something pretty massive with them. I had a guest on this podcast a uh, number of months ago, and he said, you know, actually, I don't think it's time. He's like, I think it's the emotional energy that consumes the time. And that like took me for a second. I went into deeper level and I was like, actually, I think you might be right. What are your thoughts? I'm just curious what your thoughts on that. What, what's more valuable, your time or the emotional energy attached to the time? I think it depends. So the, the way that we can all, like, we can quantify time. Mm -hmm. Like we, we all agree right. what the definition of time 60 is. 60 seconds but in we a minute, might right. have, Exactly. But we might not have equal definitions of emotional expenditure. Mm -hmm. Like somebody might, it might be a lot more taxing for somebody to be sharing their time to somebody else. That's mm -hmm. like the, that's not measurable. So yep. I don't know if I would adhere to that, but I also yep. come from a girl who my mom was diagnosed with brain cancer when I was 19 years old and she battled for eight and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so w what that makes you realize I was 25 years old and my mom was 50 and the doctors had said her battle, like they were done. No more chemo, no more shunts, no more brain operations. And it just, it hit everybody like a Mack truck. Mm -hmm. And I think that what I realized was that I was 25 years old and I truly understood how short life is and like what a minute is. Mm -hmm. So I don't disagree with that person's amazing insight. We got super meta, mm -hmm. but like, I'm just a brown girl from the hood with immigrant parents. I just look at a minute as a minute. Every minute that I have, I want to make sure that I'm using it to the best of my ability and impacting as many lives. Mm -hmm. Emotional or not, I would rather spend an exhausting minute helping somebody than a minute on my own that I feel really great, but I'm only feeling great about myself. Give us a little insight. So you're someone that makes a lot of content. You have a business, you're a consultant, uh, you have a family. How do you spend your minutes? 
my minutes are very well accounted for Paul. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a creative, I'm a creative. Like I started my life because I did, I started my career because I didn't want a job. Mm -hmm. Right. So I, I wanted to become a photographer and I didn't have a camera. And so my brand new husband, we'd been married just a few months, gifted me with a very simple camera. And that started my first career as a professional. And then the thing that I realized that is if I wasn't extraordinarily careful with my time, I wasn't um, padding the time for me to actually create. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we get in this like idea, anybody, I, I know you're in the automotive industry and like, you're like, I'm going to make, be making uh, the last, I remember the last time we spoke, you were making these really like, beautiful like videos, right? Like, mm -hmm. let's just say like, my dream is to make these gorgeous videos and I'm just going to do this all day. And then this, they're just, they're just going to get done when they get done. And all of a sudden you're struck with the realization that like, no, that's not a business, 80, right? Yeah, no, right. It's not. You're out of business. 80% of your right. time <laughs> planning and executing and 20% of their time doing the thing that you want to do. And so what I realized if I wasn't really careful with the 80% of the logistics, I was losing the 20% to create. So now as a founder and a CEO, it's like my minutes are accounted for. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I wake up every morning at 4 30 in the morning. I don't have an alarm. It's just what time I wake up. I sleep and I'm just one of those people who need six to seven hours. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I've just, I bounce out. This is what I do. And every minute starting from four 30 throughout six, six fifteen, are accounted for. All right. So I need to dive into that a little bit more. So you say they're accounted for, what do you really mean by accounted for? Well, I think I'm are really they pissed off. Of, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I schedule like truly minutes. So I wake up at 4.30. I'm one of those people who when I'm, I'm up, I'm up. So 4.30 to 5, I pray, I read. I have just like, I have me time. I have like get grounded, get soul time. 5 to 6, I am in my inbox. I am managing like what's going on for the day. Were there any fires overnight? Who needs what? And then from 6 to 7.15, I work out. I come home. I wake up the baby. I feed her. I get her ready for the day. I hand her off to her dad. I shower, get ready for the day. I come back to her, read, put her down for a nap. And then I'm in Slack for an hour. And then I go into what's going on for the rest of the day. Today is a day that we had four podcasts back to back. And then after this, I'm going to have a meeting to plan with a graphic design team, what the new website's going to look like. And then after that, I will be able to finish some copywriting for some projects. And then I'm going to call it a day. It will be a good day. I think by like 7.15... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like looking, thinking of my 4.30 to 7.15 right now. I'm like, oh, that sounds so amazing. <laughs> well, <laughs> look, I know some people will either get motivated or demotivated by that. Um, right. I I'm going right. to take it as motivation because I think you, you prove that like there's an element of like some people like it's their natural wiring, not natural wiring. Right. And one thing I've learned is that you try to do things that aren't in the natural flow of who you're wired to be. It never really lasts. But the flip side of that is. Like you should do uncomfortable things for your personality because that's where real growth comes. And so have you always been that scheduled? No, I was, I, I have not. I, 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 I hated schedules. That's one of the reasons why I just never could get a job was like, I just hated that rigidity. And I'll, I'll just take a step back. Like I had the luxury, like capital L luxury that when I plan my day so, so fastidiously, I'm actually planning for pockets of time to do like nothing. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what being so rigid means. It's not like I'm just working 14 hours a day. So like for instance, today at 8 30 AM, it's a very California thing, Paul. I mean, you're going to roll your eyes, but we have, my sister lives in San Diego. UV saunas. I, I okay. 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 So you get it. So oh, okay. Maybe, maybe UV not. Sauna. Then you said UV sauna <laughs> and I'm rolling my know, eyes because I, I live in Syracuse, I know, I know. but go ahead, go no, ahead. But it's like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's powerful. It's detoxing. And so as we're actually reframing what we're going to be doing in social security in 2021, I was just like, the problem is I'm so on my computer. I'm so in it that I, I can't see the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm actually going to, if I'm going to bring my, my brain down to nothing, I need a space to do it. Yep. So I set up a one hour UV sauna. I go into the sauna. It's hot. Mm -hmm. It's 115 degrees. Sounds and I terrible. just sit there for 40 minutes. Oh my gosh. And you're detoxing, but you're just doing nothing, Paul. And I'm thinking, I'm saying I'm doing nothing. No, you're sweating and you're long dying. Vision for my dream. <laughs> no, I might be dying. I'm dying to my old self. Okay. I'm going to come on rebirth like a butterfly for 2021. You know, that like, sounds like true. what if I ever get captured 
I think that's how they would torture me is put me in a UV sauna. But go ahead. So, but either way, you found. You, you, fall. <laughs> you, you walk out. You walk out. You walk out. It's like float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Watch out. I'm about to, I'm you about feel, to you slay. You feel great. Because all what right. happens is like, you turn your brain off. And all of a sudden you're coming out and you're like, I see it differently. And that kind of like one, two punch, like cerebral, soulful, and then just like hustler. I think it all works. Yep. And then then there, I mean, like, look, I'm not going to argue with the fact that I'm sure there is a very physical benefit of detoxing. I'm going to, I'm going (laughs) to, I'm going to tell my wife. All right. Jasmine said (laughs) UV saunas and we're going to go find one somewhere. We're going to do this for an hour and she's going to love it because I'm going to be dying because I hate being hot. This is going to be great. Okay. So, but but to get back to what we were talking about, um, you were saying that's, I always scheduled. You became scheduled. You weren't always scheduled. You became scheduled because like, tell me about that, that shift in that transition. When you said, you know what, enough of this not being scheduled. I need to try something else. And maybe just maybe being scheduled is the answer. I, it was definitely a migration, but I'll like lead with the truth. And that truth is like, I'm a cake eater. Mm-hmm. I want my cake and I want to eat it too. Mm-hmm. I want to create and I want to have fun and mm-hmm. I don't want rules. Mm-hmm. And so if I'm like, wait a minute, I want to create and I don't want to create with rules. Well, in order for me to facilitate that, then I need to get serious with the other stuff that actually has to get done. Mm-hmm. And I was realizing that without a schedule and without regimented time, both for play and for work, yep. That I was just in a constant half state. I was hating when I had to work. And then all of a sudden I put too much pressure on myself. Like you better create between 103 and 205 or else you're off schedule. And I was like, this sucks. That doesn't work. This Any creator knows that doesn't doesn't work. work. Right. Exactly. So when you have pockets of creation throughout the day or perhaps pockets of creation for the week, you kind of have the time, like the proverbial sauna time. Like, Mm -hmm. what am I doing? Mm -hmm. How am I going to lay this out? What do I want to do? Who do I want to connect with? That kind of stuff as a creative is something you definitely need. Yeah. No, I understand that. So what do you say? So I'm going to try to speak like to all the people that are watching and listening right now, because I know it's really easy for people to say like, well, you're kind of in a unique position where you work for yourself. And, you know, even if you you know, hustled your face off for the last decade and a half to get here. People might be saying, but like, I'm not there. What can I do to build some of that into my life? Because I have a job. I have to be at work during mm-hmm. these times. You know, maybe I have a family. I have kids that need mm-hmm. me. What What are some like basic things, even from that strict, like thinking of scheduling some detachment time? You have any thoughts or tips that maybe people that don't have an hour or don't have a schedule that they can really jockey around? So first and foremost, it's, it's never been the case that I had only ever my business. Mm-hmm. Like there was a time that I did actually have a job and the thing that I was doing to be a creative was a part-time hustle. Mm-hmm. So I definitely know the struggle mm-hmm. of that. So I want to say that I empathize and I get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's too many people who same who sing that same sad song with a one string violin is like, how do you move past that? Is like, you have to make changes to get changes. And so what I realized was that there were pockets of my day that I wasn't optimizing my time. And I'm going to say stuff that really annoys people and pisses people off because they're like, there's no balance in that. Well, (laughs) we just make a decision of how we want to spend our balance. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not a TV watcher. Occasionally I'll watch something on Netflix, but like, I can't remember the last time I'm like, oh, this is my show. Yep. You know, it's like, I'm not part of like a softball team or a bowling league. Mm -hmm. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to say, I'm not going to put this on myself. I'm going to really, I I read a book called On Writing Mm -hmm. by Stephen King. Mm -hmm. I hate scary books. I hate scary movies, but I actually appreciate the art of the artist. Mm -hmm. Another very powerful book was Do the Work by Stephen Pressfield. Mm -hmm. These are small books that really had profound differences on me as a business person, even if they weren't necessarily speaking about business. So Stephen King talks about how he had a full-time boring job he despised. And what he did every day was he woke up 30 minutes early early to write hell or high water, 30 minutes, sit your butt in the chair and you just write. And he's just like, I wasn't writing and it was good. I was just writing for the discipline and the inspiration came in the discipline. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't hit when you're like, okay, I'm ready for it. You only get inspiration when you're disciplined enough to actually be open and waiting for it. And that's when I realized that if people don't have pockets of time is to really assess, what are you doing with your time? If you're watching TV, If you're hanging out, there are other opportunities for you, yeah, to wake up a little bit earlier, even if it is 15 minutes, because 15 minutes wisely spent is better than circling for 45 thinking you should be doing or going somewhere else. Totally agree with that. That's great advice. You you know, we we both, you pay a lot of attention, have a lot of interaction with Gary Vaynerchuk, and 
Gary really does a great I job. I think you have more interaction with him. I you have more interaction. Not anymore. The mutual respect. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I just, you know, I'm just like, JD's like, my husband's just like, do you think Gary knows your name? And I was like, no, yes. I don't think he knows I my bet, name. I, I would he, bet he knows your he name before is. he knows mine. <laughs> oh, oh com- okay. Anyway, we're not going to prob- have a competition about who. <laughs> who does he know least? Who is right. more <laughs> 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 I, I will say that he'd probably, in his defense, because he knows a lot of people, I know he would recognize both of us. We'll just we'll just call it a truce there. <laughs> I, you know what? He, I, I just can't say enough good things about him, and I actually do think he's so good with people that he probably would recognize our face. I, I could definitely agree yeah, with that. In he, all sincerity, he, he definitely would. Okay. So, so, so what Gary was, he goes in hard on auditing where you're spending your time, and no matter what you're doing, no matter who you are. Unless I, I can't even imagine someone who doesn't have 15 minutes of time that they can recalibrate to be still, Yeah. to be still. And yeah. whether that's TV, morning routine, afternoon routine, lunchtime, there's a way to do it. And so I like that, you know, that would you, what did you say? The inspiration follows discipline. Do you remember what you said? Yeah. You said yeah. the discipline well, comes first. Well, you don't first. get, yeah. You have to create the space to be inspired. Um, yeah, inspiration comes at all times, but really when you create space for me, I've had times where I would just go to New York city and walk around. And for me, New York city is like my white noise. Like some people have to go to the woods Mm -hmm. or go, but when I go to New York city, it's just the motion and the energy of it actually makes me feel like I'm by myself in a strange way. Um, so like, I can't do that every day though. I don't know if, yeah, New York, New York's a thing right now, but whatever it is, whatever it is for you, I like you. 15 minutes well spent could really, really intentionally well spent could really, really change your perspective. So there are a lot of things that have shifted. 2020 is not what we expected. There are a thousand excuses why you can't get started. And you've just said, you know what? 15 minutes. 15 minutes, whether you're an aspiring entrepreneur, whether you're in the professional world and you're trying to find a new job, whether you're trying to start creating content where you're trying to, whether you're trying to sell your product, whether you're trying to start a new strategy, a new marketing strategy, whatever. Can 15 minutes do it? It's better than thinking about it. You don't know. Yes. You don't know until you try. And like, can you make one sales call in 15 minutes? Can you leave five comments in 15 minutes? Can you write a paragraph in 15 minutes? Can you add a piece of color or layer to a painting in 15 minutes? Can you write a blog post in 15 minutes? I mean, come on. Gonna wave the hanky. She's preaching now. This this is the hood. I mean, this is the hood, not the halo. Yes, it's coming out. See, it's like you take the girl out of the hood, you can't take the hood out of the girl. No, I'm telling you, I'm wearing some big hoop earrings right now, Paul. I'm like, let me tell you. She's getting the Listen, snap. We can find, getting we the snap can find, going. We can find reasons for our success, or we can find excuses for why we didn't do it. So it's true. just hundred percent that there Always. are people who are doing more with 15 minutes than other people who are wasting 45 talking about how they wish they could be doing something for 15 minutes <laughs> for 15 minutes. <laughs> oh man. That's so great. Actually, you've inspired me to do, I'm just going to try to figure 15 minutes tomorrow that I can shake up my routine a little bit. Um, I really am going to do that. I'm inspired to do that. So um, you know, podcast is really just a way to get free consulting, pretty much. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there, there you go. There's my takeaway. I'm just going to siphon. Put it on free. Watch for, watch for an invoice, homie. Watch yeah. for an invoice. <laughs> my inbox just, right? She's like, send, send. All right. So rounding, rounding the corner on this, you have one minute to talk to everyone in the audience, person to person. It's November 2020 we're about to maybe figure out what's going on with this crazy election season we're about to roll into a new year fresh start 2021 you have one minute what are you saying i want you to take messy action scary action uncertain action doubtful action fearful action because success goes to those who simply take action whether or not it is right or wrong it is irrelevant to the point you will only figure out the next step when you actually take the first step. 
So indecision is only cured by action. So if you are on the precipice of doing something or starting something or reigniting something that you left or that you thought had died in 2020, this is your opportunity to use the last few weeks of the year to say, can I spend 15 minutes on this one thing? And if by the end of the year, you end up right where you are right now, you will clap that up because you will say, I did the work and I realized that that wasn't for me. Start 2021, not looking back at the things you could have done, but you're gonna look forward and say, these are the things I will do so that I am changing the narrative of who I used to be and step into the power of who I will be. 15 minutes till the end of the year, see what happens. 15 minutes to the end of the year. 15 and, minutes. And see what happens. Yes. On that, uh, we're going to wrap it up. Jasmine, thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you. The fact that I know thank now you. that you're scheduled so tightly makes these minutes even more valuable. I'm even more grateful for them. <laughs> even more grateful for them now. So I can't wait until the next time we can do this. Until then, wishing you uh, much happiness and success getting through this crazy 2020 and into 2020. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Much love and God bless. I appreciate you. So there you have it. I love the concept of like, well, I'll give you the halo and then I'll give you the hood. I can really relate to that. And I think that everyone from this podcast, you know, you know my intention of even making this content, taking the time to do it and taking the time to put it out and so that you can see it is that you'll actually take some action and that it will give you clarity. And when I say clarity, I mean perspective on where you are on your journey. And once you have perspective, then you can make the right decisions as you navigate through it. I'm absolutely going to start dedicating 15 minutes a day through the end of the year to bringing my energy down, bringing my mentality down so I can think and have some quiet and have some, um, hopefully, objectivity. So I'll let you know how it's going, but I'm definitely going to take the advice that our guest Jasmine gave us today. I hope you'll go follow her. I hope you'll go uh, in interact with her content. If it's right for you, I hope you'll join Social Curator because it sounds like an amazing solution. And uh, until then, I hope you pursue clarity, and I'm just thankful that you spent some time here. I hope it's worth it. I hope you share it with a friend. And what I, if you could just go leave a review of the podcast on iTunes, uh, that would mean the world to me. That helps more people see it and helps us blow this thing up as, as much as we can. So until then, I will see you next week. Pursue clarity. You just got a love song. You just got a love song.